Welcome to the ADP Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. Steve-O, today we're talking about GMO. Yes. Now, it's interesting because, um, again, tagline for my life is nature knows best. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's impossible, I think, to get away from GMO foods mm. completely because they permeate so many areas. But the whole concept of GMO, and, it's, and mm. it can be a bit polarizing, is it good, is it bad, is it somewhere in the middle? Mm. That's part of the narrative of yeah. being able to improve using science to improve the yield of foods, mm. be able to produce more um, and to make them more resistant mm. uh, to pests yep. and that sort of stuff. I've got some pros and cons here from papers. Can we start with the pros? Sure. And, and, and the theory of the way that it's being pitched as being great for humanity. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's an interesting one. Now, GMO stands for genetically modified organism. Sure. Just so we know. It's genetically modified. Mm-hmm. So already we're starting to think a little bit you know, a little bit, that doesn't sound... Yeah, but I mean, you but, know, you I, know, I guess basic, and it's not genetic mo- modification, but, you know, growing roses where you would sort of cross-pollinate and you'd, you'd sort of oh, create... Oh, you, you know, and then, yeah. and then same with dogs and that as well, too. Yeah. Like, um, what do they call that? Like that selective breeding yeah, and all that sort of stuff, right? Stuff. So this is a little bit different. A little bit, because roses look pretty, cotton, you can get more cotton off it, and but, but we're talking about the foods here, really. Yeah. So there's genetically everything for everybody, you know, it's all changed, all, you know, we're genetically mixed. But I've got some examples here of, of what they what they say are positive. Some of these I don't agree with at all. You don't agree with? That, that aren't positive, they're actually negative. Uh, but yeah, but, and that. then it comes down to your viewpoint, right? Yeah. So let's, let's, let's right. just go through the list of positives. Okay, the first one says increased attractiveness to consumers. For example, apples and potatoes are less likely to have a bruise or turn brown. Sure. Okay, so you can genetically modify these things to have, you know, less bruising, for example. And my understanding is as well, too, from supermarkets, typically yep. is the amount of food that they reject is massive yeah. because if it's if it's got spots on it, I mean, I remember that song, I don't care about my, apple, uh, my spots yeah, on my apples, uh, just don't, don't use the DDTs. Go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't know what don't, you well, got they, the, gone. Yeah, that's it. They pave paradise and put up a parking pave lot. Pave paradise to put up a parking lot, that's it. Uh, who's that by? I can't oh, remember who that's from. Come on, Steve. It was not Johnny Mitchell, is it? No, no, no. no. It was, oh, that might have been the original, but I yeah. think it was done by, was it um, Hootie and the Blowfish or something? I forget. Ah, come on. Who was it? Oh, Big Yellow goes. Taxi. Big Yellow Taxi. Taxi. Counting Crows. Counting Crows. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Joni Mitchell is the original. The original was Joni Mitchell. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Don't care. Sp- don't care about spots on my apples. Yeah. Just uh, don't give me the DDT, and it's yeah. like just look after the birds and bees. That's if you look up the look that's up the, the song. Anyway, so the whole thing about um, the amount of food that's rejected because mm. it doesn't look appealing is true. Yeah. Mind you, I wish they cared more about the flavour. Because there's nothing in your freaking strawberries yeah. and your blueberries now. I remember going out to a farm one time out here um, uh, to get some strawberries back of crest meat, I think it was. Yeah. They had two different types of strawberries there. The flavour on the strawberries mm. was, like, seriously mm. unbelievable. Yeah, you can taste it. I would take that over confectionery any day of the yeah. week. It, it was, whereas you go down to the local supermarket now, you pick up a pun of the strawberries it's like nothing. It's sort, like sort of green, mushy. Like, there's it's, no it's not, strong flavour. Yeah, there's no no strawberry flavour. Yeah. Um, but but the second point. Hey, farmer, put away your DDT now. Give me spots on my apples, but leave me the birds and bees, please. Yeah. I love it. Oh, that's a great song. Yeah, anyway. that's it. Our DDT is a very strong pesticide. Big Yellow yeah. Taxi song by Joni Mitchell. Yeah. Okay. But that was, um, DDT was, was a big problem in, in Victoria. What is DDT for those that don't know, Steve? Dichloro. Um, phenyl, phenyl, thai, chloro, ethane. Oh, oh there wow. you go. <laughs> I'm glad that we've got so a chemist here. It's an organochloride, which is uh, it's, uh, things that kills things. So organo means carbon and chlorine attached. So you see all the chlorines. And they banned it in 1972. Yeah. Which it's, is interesting. It's got a long half So Monsanto, I think, is going the same way with, um, what's their- Glyphosate? Glyphosate. Really? Well, there's been a lot of lawsuits against it. Yeah. Same sort of thing. Anyway, the reason why we're talking about that is that a lot of genetically modified crops are designed to be to withstand yep. that sort of stuff. But Steve, that's, I don't want to spoil your time, but, but well, that, that, we're, we're, getting we're getting there. We're getting there. We'll go to that point now, because right. it's absolutely true. Okay. This is what they say is a- um, is a positive. Sure. Is that it now becomes resistant to pesticides. Yeah. Now, the reason for that is that, that you know, in the past to spray a crop, you imagine acres and acres, you didn't go out there with your hand sprayer. Yeah. So now if the crop doesn't die from DDT or, or sorry, not, not, not that, but it doesn't die from glyphosate, you can just spray the entire field. Yes. And just the weeds will die. The crop will keep growing. Well, yeah. And what's interesting <laughs> though is that what happened, what does nature do typically? It's like holding back the tide. It's yeah. like, you know, nature fights back. It does. So 
Matt, with that, yeah. and, and let's talk about what it does to the microbiome, oh, Steve, not yeah. as an endocrine disrupting yep. hormones. Stuffs and we can talk about that, but have a look at pigweed just really quickly, Matt, pull up pigweed, because this is starting to happen in the United States where what they're doing is they're using genetically modified crops and monoculture is bad, Steve. Do, yep. do, are you going to mention that? Are you yep. going to talk about that? Okay. So, so what it comes down to pigweed is, um, uh, oh, they call it amaranth. Yeah. It's an intangible name. Wow. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. It's a terrible weed. It is. And it is completely resistant to glyphosate. Wow. What it does is it's taking over huge tracts of farmland in the yeah. United States, and it is extremely difficult to get rid of. Mm. So what's happening is, is as they're spraying this stuff, it's completely killing off, you know, I don't know what it's doing to the insects, oh, but it's, 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 killing, it's killing off, you know, all these other... Um, uh, uh, plants and what have you. Sure. And pigweed goes, sweet. Well, yeah. if they're all dead and I'm resistant to it, then they're taking over. Yeah. And it's sucking all the nitrogen and nutrients yep. out of the ground and you're, and you're left with the stuff that's just... And it grows like there's no tomorrow. It's like it's like taking antibiotics for the human mi- microbiome. It'll kill bacteria, but you'll, you're left with a whole lot of yeast in your gut. Well, we talk a lot about biome, Steve. We do. And yeah. we, most people, when they think hair of biome, they think gut biome. Yeah. But you've got skin biome, yep. hair biome. You've, you've got, um, well, I guess there's skin, but you've, you've got um, soil biomes mm. as well too. It's sure. just, just and, and this is what this is doing is it's coming in like a massive antibiotic, yep. really, yep. and then just destroying everything. Yep. It's, it's really stupid. It's really stupid, but let's, let's just play devil's advocate. Let's okay. say that it works great and yep. it, the, the spray only kills the weeds. What, and it does get onto our food and we don't consume it? I oh, know, that, that's the downside. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> was, we, we actually end up eating uh, it. And look, Steve, this is part of it. So th- there's two for me, and yeah. again, Steve, I'm uneducated here because the last time I looked at this was probably 10 15 years ago. Yeah. So maybe there's some, been some advancements since then. Yeah. But I do want to break down glyphosate yeah. and I do want to have a look at some of the lawsuits, Matt, just to sort of show that this yep. is sort of, you know, there. The other thing I want to have a look at as well too, Steve, is that that's the big one for me yeah. is that it's the chemicals, the the pesticides yeah, that pesticides. kill pests, right? Yeah. But those are also the ones that kill the plants as well too. There is. So, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a study on glyphosate here and I'll, I'll find it here a bit later, but it increases... Um, Lymphomas by about forty-one percent. That, that was a so it is linked with cancer. So if you're going to spray your crop with this, which you can, assuming it works and all this sort of stuff, then of course you're going to increase cancer risk. So, so, so I just want to read this just so that yeah, we're talking there is about a it. Action. So, major thing with yep. genetically modified, not all but a lot, are resistant to glyphosate. Yep. So the glyphosate uh, lawsuits to date, Monsanto. Yeah. I think that's owned by. Bayer now, okay. um, has settled over 100,000 Roundup lawsuits. And that's the brand name, by wow. the way, yeah. right? Um, worth over $10 billion. Billion. Now, mind you, that I reckon would be a fraction of what they they do. Because they create a closed loop, right? They yeah. create genetically modified seeds mm. that um, uh, die, yeah. that, that you can't replant. So yeah. they, they've got... Um, uh, uh, they call it suicide seeds, I think. Yeah. So in other words, you plant them, they create a crop, but the seeds that are formed on that plant, you cannot plant, they yeah. die, right? Which again, it's, it's, like, yeah, it's, it's an abomination. Yeah. Yeah. But then you, you buy the seeds, but then you then spray them with, with chemicals yeah. as well too, right? Mm. So they've got a beautiful little system, right? Um, yeah. $10 billion, I reckon, would be pittance to them. Well, um, I, got, I got that data for you. It's not Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it's increased by 41%, and there's a couple of studies on that. So, we're, you know, this is, this, is, this, is, this is one of their advantages. This is one I, I disagree with. I don't think this is an advantage of GMO food. What's because that? Because you can spray it with glyphosate. I think it's a disadvantage. Well, I mean, as you can see, Steve, there have been, it's not just conspiracy. No. no. It, this has actually been, in a court of law, people have received yep. payouts. And it, it says underneath it as well, too. Um, uh, if you or your loved one have been exposed to Roundup in a work or home gardening setting and subsequently developed cancer, you may qualify for a lawsuit. This is the same as cigarettes. Mm. This is the same as, as um, asbestos. Mm. This, this is going the same way. It now, is. originally, yeah. what does the industry do when they say, oh, you're hurting people. No, 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 we deny. don't. Deny. Deny. Deny, yeah. Deny. 
And and then what ends up happening? Eventually, the yeah. truth comes out, which yeah. it almost always does. Uh, but it's incredible. But anyway, so now, now you can remember you can buy this from Bunnings, or you can buy it from Woolworths. It's still available. It's still available in Australia right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Why? I do not know. Oh well, people want to kill their weeds, I guess. But it's and do you, you know can, that you can do it with a natural solution. In fact, I buy one from Bennett Bunnings that's got um cloves and, yeah, and other stuff yeah. in it, and it works great. Works great. But 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 this stuff, I mean, you can get you know, the, uh, it's 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 round, round up, and you get five liters of it. You can you can buy bulk of this stuff. Mm. So I mean, if you're and, and you know, let, let, let's go back to the good old farmer. This stuff's cheap when you buy it in bulk. So if you get out there with your big tractor and you spray gallons of it out the back, just on all your crops, you don't have to be discriminatory, and it will just kill the weeds. Assuming it works like that, it's still going to end up on your crop, and you're going to end up eating it, and your micro microbiome is going to be stuffed and increase the risk of cancers. Mm. So I don't think that's an advantage. No, well, of course I, they, I they, don't as well. They say it is. There's a couple other advantages here that they say that that it is that you, you can you can genetically modify them to increase the flavour. Oh, okay. Now, is that a good or bad? I mean, let, let, let's... That sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. But but are, are, are we supposed to have flavours in such higher concentrations, you know? Well, I don't notice it in my strawberries unless my strawberries are just green they, harvested. They, they, they may not be... Well, like corn, for example, and soy are the two classic... Yes. ...over 90% of those crops are GMO. Yep. And it's gone up since the year 2000. I've got a graph in a study here somewhere. It's, it's basically 90% of the crops uh, are GMO. So, so and you see corn and it looks gorgeous and probably tastes gorgeous. You know, it's got lots more sugars in it, yep. which increase palatability, but increase, of course, lots of sugars. You know, it's not, not as good for you. It tastes better. Um, um, yeah. So okay. Maybe. Bit of a yep. bit of a... Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, it certainly can get a longer shelf life and therefore less waste. That's uh, probably understandable. Yeah. How do they? How do they genetically modify it so that it doesn't break down as quickly? Oh, you just get the the, the parts that are that are unstable in it, like some of the what they call antioxidants, and you remove some of the antioxidants from it. That's how they do it, because antioxidants attract electrons and become free radicals themselves. Really? Yeah. So any of the unstable chemicals in it, like vitamin C is an unstable chemical, for example. Right. Very unstable. If you expose vitamin C to the air, it'll, it'll go rancid. Yes, it does. Yeah. It oxidizes really yeah. quickly. Okay. So, so you get rid of that shit out of there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, what do you need that stuff for? And, and then you, you're left with a more stable plant. So it's kind of like a McDonald's burger that you can keep on the shelf and it just stays there forever, right? Versus something fresh and made and literally within, you know, 48 hours there's mold yeah. on it, right? Now, you know, if I wanted to genetically modify, say, berries, that's got a natural preservative in it, okay? Yes. Now, let's just go, go for a sec that you can consume it in the small amounts that it's found in there. But if you genetically modify it to increase that by 10 times, right. so you have 10 times the preservative, in it, it's going to preserve it longer. Yeah. But is that healthy for you? Well, I, I, I don't know, but I'm arguing, no, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not, because too much of the preserve we know kills the microbiome. Right. So we know <laughs> in the mouth- Talking resveratrol. Well, resveratrol is, is an antioxidant in there, but, but you, can, you can look at the other um, actual preservatives in there, you know, which are, which are like um, the, um, tell me the, name, the chemicals in there, but they are actual preservatives that you can use synthetically as well. Okay. And so, you know, but, but again, if you're changing these levels, what- what happens if a human eats it? Mm. You know, yes, it'll preserve longer, mm. but what if you eat it? Mm. And you will eat it. Okay. So, all right, 50-50. What else? Greater resistance to viruses and other diseases, which could lead to uh, less waste and increased food security. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. But again, how do they do it? Yeah, well, it's it's you just genetically spice the bits that, that make it vulnerable. Like, you know, we've got the ACE2 receptors, which make us more receptible to, to viruses, yep. like the coronavirus. Sure then you can just splice them out of it. Do we know what the impact of splicing those things out do? Because, I mean, look- The human the way, health. No, 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 for, for the food, because as we're eating it. Because, I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, who said that you are what you eat? Show me what a man eats and I'll show you who he is. Yeah. Uh, I think this was back in the 1800s, right? Yeah. So if we don't know what we're eating yeah. or if our food is Franken food, yeah. um, it's not, it's, it's, it's alive. That, that's, you know. the, that's one of the big cons with this. We okay. haven't got to the cons yet. Okay. All right. Sorry. So, keep going. No, Steve. that's all right. So, so incredible. Um, okay. You can increase the nutritional value as golden rice, which, uh, as in what they've done with golden rice, which can boost the health of people with limited access to foods. Hmm. So you can probably do that mm. in a safe way. Mm. But well, the way I look at it as well too is I'm mm. not 
um, anti-activated vitamins, for yeah. example. Yeah. And and synthetic vitamins, you know, I, I appreciate probably have their place. It's the overuse of them day in, day out, yeah. just constantly using them that yeah. I think that's probably not not the best use of them. Oh. The same thing with this as well too. Yeah. Like for, for limited use periods of acute sickness or illness, I, I could probably get on board with that. Yeah. But but longer term, you know, nature knows best. Yeah. See if I can exactly keep saying that. Exactly, it does. Now, also, we've got um, the ability to thrive in harsh climates, such as drought or right. heat-resistant plants. Right. Now, they, they went on to say about global warming and this, about how the globe's warming, and therefore we've got to make it heat-resistant because mm. the world's heating up. But, but they're the sort of they're the main... They're the sort of pros. Yeah, they're the main pros. All right. Um, so... Um, Anything then, else then on there, Steve, before we flip over and we start looking at no, some of the No, but there's cons? some good potential pros Look, there. I like some of the framing of some of this. Yeah. I said it's kind of makes sense. Yeah. But, but my... My caveat is always okay, but what does that mean for us? If 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 a if a round peg is designed to go into a round hole, yep. and we're taking out and we're changing that round peg to a square peg, yep. it, it might have all the attributes and the benefits from the outside. But how does that interact with our bodies? How does that interact with our digestion, <laughs> with our our our, our gut, uh, with our absorption? Yep. How does that all work? How does it do? Well, let me answer that question for you. You ready for this? Yeah. Scientists have not yet known, uh, have not yet shown that GMO foods are harmful, harmful to health, but research is ongoing. So what they're saying is that they don't know. Mm. They don't know. They haven't found it to be harmful, but they haven't found it to be beneficial mm. because it's just new. Uh, we don't know. There's no. Well, how long has GMO been around for, Steve? I mainly can't. since 2000 is when they started really ramping it up. Really? Yeah. I thought it was older than that. Yeah, well, it was, but that's when they started ramping it up. L- yeah. Large crops. Large and, crops, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's been in our, our food supply for about, you know, like, you know, the, 20, the corn is the, the most common. Yeah, it's been, been 20, 25 years. Okay. Now, most people don't consume corn. They consume corn syrup, which is the, you know, the sugary part of it, which I don't think you would have all the genes out. It's highly refined. So there's no genetic material left in sugar. But corn itself, there's this, and soy are the two big classic ones, and they're heavily genetically modified now. So we don't know what's happening, but there are some speculations about, for example, it can make things more allergenic. For example, soya beans, they, they combine a gene from the Brazil nut. Okay. So hypothetically, and, there's, and they haven't tested this fully yet, that if you're allergic to nuts and have soy, you could have an allergic reaction. That makes sense. Because you got genes from a, a nut. Yeah. Now, has it been tested? No, because you can't say, oh, you've got a severe nut allergy. Here's some soy and see what happens. You, you can't test that. It's got to be done in, in laboratories and all that, and the, the science is still out on that one. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, – and the World Health Organization stepped in and said discourage genetic engineers from using DNA from allergens unless they can prove that the gene itself does not cause the problem. So – uh, again, we don't know, but the World Health Organization has raised concerns. And I'm not a fan of them, but they've, they've, I, I agree with them with this one. I've got some data, um, you know, I've got some data on how many, you ask, like how many of these sort of things to date. Now, this is a, a paper published in Planter, which I'd never heard of, um, which is a scientific paper, and it says to date nearly 5,025 different cha- transgenic events in 32 crops have been approved for cultivation in different parts of the world. Now, I've got some foods here that, that, that have been genetically modified and approved. Okay. I'll give you some now. Where, where is this in a state? Worldwide. This worldwide. is worldwide. Oh, okay. Okay, but, but you'll, you'll, be able to, you'll, be, you'll be eating a lot of these. Okay. Um, maize, like corn. Corn. Yep. Copper. Oh, uh, cotton, sorry, but we're not I don't that. eat copper. Um, okay. Cotton, yeah. But, but cotton seed oil? Yeah, what, right. What's that going to do? Don't know. Um, potatoes, soybeans. Potatoes. Rice, tomato, sugar cane, beans, canola, um, sugar beet, wheat, um, papaya, squash. Papaya, papaya. Yep. Sorry. Plum and sweet potatoes. That's a lot. And sweet peppers too. Wow. Isn't that nuts? Sweet peppers, yeah. what capsicum? Capsicum, yeah. So it's got to be American, American yeah. paper, yeah. So that's that's quite scary. That's a lot of food, isn't that it? That is a lot of food. That is and, a lot of food. And people could consume that every single day now, couldn't they? You know, you could have some one of those foods every single day mm. if you wanted to. So there are, you know, a lots of um, problems now. Now, one of the other benefits that they came up with is that they may be you, you may be able to breed them to be higher in essential amino acids. 
Mm. Okay. So, so plants themselves, you know how you talk about glyphosate, mm. that disrupts the amino acid building blocks in plants. So they can't make their amino acids and the plant dies. Right. That's how glyphosate works. So but what they're doing with these is while they're making them resistant to Roundup, which it won't, Roundup won't kill these plants, they enhance the essential amino acid production that you can get out of plants. Mm. So, you know, it may help people get more amino acids, especially essential ones, because we can't make those amino acids. Plants right. can. Yeah. We're, we're, we, we have to eat eight. That's why they're called essential amino acids. You know, the, the other ones, we can make about 14, but we can't make eight of them. So um, plants may be able to breed to have more of these amino acids in there. Interesting. Yeah. Now, now, what, now I'm hearing all the bodybuilders going, well, that's a good thing. It may be a good thing. But because the branch chain amino acids are essential, but what if you're having too many of some of them and not enough of the others? You you get an imbalance. Mm, that yeah, maybe Stephen. Maybe. And, but that's one of the things that doesn't yeah. really concern me that much. No, this doesn't concern me too yeah. much. Um, but there are major concerns in this paper, um, and and it's to do with uh, words that I've got to be very careful saying: uh, cisgenics and intragenics. Okay. Cisgenics is when you change the gene on one side of the plant. Because you know how the gene, if you see DNA, you see how it's got the double helix mm -hmm. thing? Okay, you can change just one side of it, okay. and that's called a cisgenic. Right. And if you transplant them from the RNAs, the two RNAs that make it up, it's transgenic. Now, what that means is that's a big change in the plant. That's a big change in the gene, the transgenic um, change. So that that all bets are off with that one. Mm -hmm. But they're doing that now. Wow. They're not just modifying it so as like, like in the old days you could selectively breed plants like yes you know and and that that a plant naturally grew in it and, and it naturally had a more resistance yeah. to something or it grew bigger or taller yeah. and you you didn't propagate that crop sure that's completely been Almost going like on forever. selection right and natural then selection. and then horticulture and 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 husbandry was yeah. in it with animals and that as well too you take the strongest or you take the attributes that you want and then you interbreed those and then you consistently refine over time like yeah. that's smart it is this is a little bit different this, this is on is, a cellular this level is, where we're interfering with the actual makeup we are, of we the are changing the genes of these plants so what are some of the potential problems Steve that you see well again they, they don't know it hasn't been tested in humans mm. you don't know what's going to happen down the track like what's going to happen to us but here's the other thing um, they're you, you also, they, they are resistant to pesticides, not just glyphosate, but like spraying the bugs. So if, if you want to kill bugs on your crop nowadays and you sprayed, you'd have to spray around your crop or it could damage it. Yeah. If they're resistant to that stuff as well, you could spray it with a couple of things, mm. uh, all in one bucket, in one hit, yeah. you kill everything, bugs and everything. Because remember, bugs are, you know, we, we, we love our bugs here, but if you're a farmer, you don't like bugs. No. You try and kill them. Well, what's interesting, and, and uh, this was, I saw this on Joe Rogan as well too, he's talking about biodynamic farms. Yeah. And he's talking, and this is sort of making a bit of a comeback, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So they would basically graze the animals, they'd yeah. move them from one paddock to the mm -hmm. next. Um, around that, they'd have, you know, all sorts of different crops, not just a, 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 a mono a mono crop, mm. where it's just huge tracts of farmland. And I yeah. appreciate there was efficiencies in that, right? Mm. But in terms of the actual, um, you know, soil, the actual interaction between the different crops, the interaction between the animals, the birds that then come along and then eat the eat the bugs, mm. you know, the, the, the pollination of, mm. of of the bees and all yeah. that sort of stuff. It was just a perfect little, you know. Ecosystem. Ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. And when you've got massive tracts of land, that doesn't happen in nature. Now, I appreciate we've gone through the Industrial Revolution. We're looking at ways to improve things and absolutely science and advancement is great. Mm. But there are some things that I think we're starting to learn now that we're refusing to acknowledge because it's not – um, commercially viable yeah. or as commercially viable. And this is where obviously profit before people, um, yeah, it's a concern. It's a concern. So, so let's try and develop a test to see whether we can test, a theoretical test, to see whether GM food is is legit or healthy. Okay. What you'd have to do is firstly get a large population because humans are exposed to all sorts of toxins and stresses. Sure. And well, we just did a podcast on that, 10 things that'll kill you before oh, you leave the home. Absolutely. Steve, right? so, so, you know, you have to... And, and we didn't even cover half of it. There's probably 20 more, right? I oh, know. So. And, and, and that doesn't count what, what people do with their day-to-day -day lives. I mean, like their jobs or whatever. But, but you'd have to get like 10,000 plus people and you have to expose half of them to this food and then half of them to non-GMO food, like their entire, and you have to do it group. over over many, many years, like, you know, 
20, 30 years because you've got a generational thing and you've then you've got to develop that study and control for all the variables, it'll be impossible. Yeah. It'll be impossible. I thought you were going to say, but I've got that study, right? Yeah, no, no. no. It, it, well, there's no studies. It, it, so, so, so people are going to email and say, so, so is it safe? We don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows because you've got to you've got to have this big study like that, and you can't do it because mm. of it's like the the great you know what we're, we're going to be talking in podcasts down in the future about what makes us live longer, and one of the theories is calorie restriction. So, how do you test that in humans? Well, you calorie restrict them for eighty years, mm. and you have to control for all the other variables. It's almost impossible to do. And and also one thing we haven't talked about here is the perception around genetically modified mm. foods. Okay. Oh, you know, the I don't know. I, I would ima- I would think the in the elder generation. Mm. When I say elder, I mean I'm nearly fifty. Like you know, probably the you bloody young then. 50, <laughs> 50, 50, 50 years. And I don't know. I, I would say that overwhelmingly, it's probably positive because really? yeah. that's what I would guess. Because about global warming, yeah. about starvation, about oh, yeah. a noble motive. Because yeah. I think they've done quite a good job. Oh yeah. Myself personally, I, I don't want it. I want it properly labeled mm. on my food. I'd like to say this contains genetically modified, you know, products. Sure. But um but what is it? What is the consensus? Well, the consensus, I mean, well, I said about the perceptions of this. Yeah. So, so I'll, they, they haven't tested the perceptions or they oh. have actually. They've done some surveys and people don't like it. Oh. They, they don't, don't like they don't like genetically modified foods. Why? They have concerns about it. Well, the people are smarter than I thought. Yeah. No, no, seriously. They, no, they are because it's like, you know, we, we, when you say genetically modified. I guess it's a scary word. It's just a word. That, I think, aren't they trying to change it from genetically modified to something else? <laughs> well, the data just says GMO. They always use GMO. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, 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 the perception of it, you, you could say um, um, breeding enhanced. <laughs> well, you, you better believe it because, because if you're in marketing, right, yeah. And, and you have an agenda to kill as many people as possible. I'm just kidding. If you, and if you have an agenda to 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 make money and to yeah. do what you want, and yeah. there are health and safety concerns, yeah. the best thing that you can do yeah. is remarket, re- come Sorry. up with a new name, something that sounds positive. Yes. Like instead of warmonger, go with peacekeeper. I mean, you know what I mean. Like yeah. you need yeah. something. You need to that, change the you narrative. Need, you need something that changes the. The, 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 it makes you feel good about it. I mean, politicians are fantastic at that, yeah. right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, the papers, like the title of this one um, says, should, uh, should we still worry about the safety of GMO foods? Why and why not? So it's an absolute, this is what the science look at the both sides. They don't have an emotional attachment. They just look at the data. And this paper shows that there are concerns about people consuming, you know, when they're, when they're told, they just got concerns about it. Now, I want to show you this graph. Um, this is that graph that I was referring to before about 2000 where most like before that you can see with down there and then we just look at corn here. You see at, at 2000 about 25% of crops right. were GMO. Now look at it. It's right up there. 90. 95%. So, it's so just, if you're eating corn. It's GM. Yeah, if you're eating soy, it's GM. Wow. So, so I this, loved corn. I haven't eaten corn for ages, actually, yeah. but I, I did love corn. Yeah, I know. It's 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 a worry. It, it, it certainly is a worry. There's, a, there's actually a yeah. little like organic food place um, yeah. that we go to. I have to get maybe some corn from there. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't actually re- remember seeing them having corn though. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, it's it's really really uh, you know you can make it resistant. You make it look you yellow. You can make it look great. So it'll look better to you. Mm. So that's a. Oh, I'll call it an advantage because people are going to be more attracted to eating more fruits and vegetables. But, 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 but you know, is, is that yellow? Is, that, is, is it too much for us? Mm. You know, if you're eating corn every day, it's one of your staples, and you're having a lot more of this yellow, what, probably a carotenoid, I mean, is that too much? You don't know. I mean, you don't know what's going on. That, that's the whole problem. And, and it's quite scary. Now, I want to give you some food stats around the world. We've actually had another record year of growing grains worldwide. Mm. So... Uh, grains are growing, you know, we, we are still growing loads and loads of food out there. Right. So, you know, do, could we use more food in more places? Sure. You know, but in a lot of places, we're still having an excess of food. But I'll read the summary of, of um, this paper that I quoted before. You're going to love this. This is the, the, the very top of the, the study. It says, the hugely controversial concerns over the GMO foods in terms of consumer safety and environmental sustainability seem to remain unchanged. So despite all the education about this, people still have huge concerns about GM food. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't quantify that 
Because if you're worried about the food you're eating, you're not going to have a happy life. You're not going to have, you know, you're not going to enjoy eating anymore if, if you're worried about what you're eating. Um, you're, you're, you're going to have a, a much less quality of life. Blind eye, Steve. I think most people will turn a blind eye. They feel that they can't do too much about it. Yep. They don't know yep. that it's it's bad. Like they can't say this is exactly why. Yep. And I think this is what, you know, a lot of a lot of agencies, a lot mm. of government will turn back and go, well, what's wrong with it? Well, he, well we don't have the data. Yeah. Oh, well, then shut up. Yeah. There's it's, nothing, it's, to, it's nothing five, to see here. The, so, the, the but all they were yeah. asking for is more transparency, yep. Yep. more studies, yep. more peer-reviewed studies yep. where we possibly can would be fantastic to get some meta-analysis as well too. Absolutely. But they, they don't, Steve. They don't. And what I mean by they is the yeah. powers that be, the people yeah. who have interests in place, the people who are making decisions, who who, who aspire to noble motives. Mm. This is the thing. I mean, we're constantly tricked. We're constantly mm. bamboozled. This is why we say question everything. You don't have to agree with us. We could be wrong, yeah. 100%. But we don't know. We don't know. And, and there's, there's correlation and causation. Um, and there's a lot of correlation with genetically modified foods and behavioural um, aspects of children because they've both been rising pretty simultaneously. It doesn't mean it caused it, sure. but it, it's it's a possible. it needs to be explored. Mm. I mean, what if we got, you know, a few children, took them off all GM food and control it and see what happens? I mean, it may not make any difference, but it may. Sure. Who knows? Yeah. You don't, we don't it'd be, know. It would be good control. But the problem is there's so, so many overlapping trends at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the rise in technology, yeah. so therefore the rise in, in, in radio frequencies, yeah. um, the increase in the vaccination schedule, there's, you know, um, uh, changes to our water, there's changes mm. to our food. Um, there, there's, there's changes happening all around all us around, all the time. And that's why you can't study it. Yeah. That's why it's so difficult to study this. Because, you know, we, we, if I wanted to test this, this drug, this liquid drug here on something – then you can you can say okay I'm going to give you a placebo or the drug and I'll take a hundred people sure. put them on a placebo and sure. you can control for yeah. that yeah. and so you can sort of have a good measure outcome yeah it doesn't prove it but it gives you a good indication if you use statistics to see that this is probably a good treatment yeah. and you know that that's a, that the, this is what you need to do in science but you can't do it with food it's very difficult to have a placebo broccoli. <laughs> you know, we can't. Yeah, you know, it's like, oh, no, no, this is broccoli. I'm sorry. I've, I've got the, and the other stuff is white powder. It's like, no, no, no. you know. So, so humans, but a tablet that's identical, you can swap it out. Yeah, that's true. So very difficult to, to use the gold standard testing for this, which is a randomized double blind placebo controlled trial. I don't, I don't think we'll get it. So, Steve, what else have you got for me? I've got, you know, and I'm going to take devil's advocate now, is, is that let's say GM, I'm going to make a big assumption that it's completely safe. Okay. All right, let's make it completely safe. And we can grow it in salty areas. We can grow it in drier areas. We sure. can grow it in um, all sorts of bitter like, yields. Like, 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 look at our, um, like, I'll take an extreme example, the Simpson Desert yeah. in Australia. It's massive. Mm-hmm. It's got nothing. Yeah. Okay, it's got plants and snakes mm. and stuff, but it's got nothing that humans can use. Okay, mm. it's still beautiful. And I love it out there. But imagine opening that up to agriculture. You would, you would pretty much cure hunger. You know, the Saharan Desert may not grow there, but it, maybe you can grow it in parts of there. You, you know, you can utilise more land. Mm-hmm. I mean... Do you know who's doing this right now? Who's that? Israel. Really? They've got the world's leading desalinisation plants. Oh, wow. They are now a net exporter of water. Really? Really. Because they're a dry area. Uh-huh. And guess what they're doing? What are they they're doing? pumping that into those arid areas. Yeah. And creating brilliant crops of food. There you go. They're actually a next exporter of food as well, too, yeah. which is a relatively small country and arid, but yet, you know. So the technology mm. is there. Now, in Australia, obviously, going from the sea because we're a big island, mm. um, but surely, Steve, if, in the water tables, if we go down, there's got to be enough water. And I don't know. I'm just, this is oh, just a great artesian basin full of water. Well, why aren't we doing that? I naturally don't like GMO either, Steve, yeah. but again, you know, it's, it's just, it's just uh, intuitive, which isn't enough. We need, mm. we need um, em- empirical data, you yeah. know, we need well, to see it. I'm an old naturopath, so, so I don't like this because it's changing what we have eaten for thousands of years, and I don't like that. Well, the biggest thing for me that I can point to that I know is that I don't like glyphosate. I do not like it. We, we know, we yeah. know, we know, we know. Yeah. Now, if the GMO doesn't have the glyphosate in it, I mean, I, I worry about technology like CRISPR. Uh, I worry about that sort of that's stuff, right? Oh, is it? Yeah. Like, like, and that's where you're looking at gene modification and yep. splicing. Now, as I say, there's always something to yep. pay. There's always something to, to be mindful of, right? Yep. Especially if you're abandoning the laws of nature. Absolutely. But, but 
I am open minded yeah. to look at it from a point of view of if you can prove that it's safe, I'm I'm uh, great. That's so. about where I am with this. Um, but 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 proving it's safe, uh, you know, thinking it from a, a scientific point of view. I don't know how they're going to do that. Mm. I don't know. I mean, you could give it to a mouse and see what happens to that event. You know, they, they live three years. So, you know, if they live only two years or something, it may be a problematic. But then mice and – so you, you, it has to go on for 80 years, these mm. studies. And, and you can't do that. Mm. You can't do studies for 80 years. Mm. People just give up on it. You know, they're, 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 you know you, you can't, but humans have got choice. We've got this cerebral cortex, this big thing that gives us all this choice. No, you think you have choice. You have the illusion of illusion choice. Illusion of choice, yes. Left wing, right wing, same bird. Just yeah. remember that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, um, Steve, is there anything else to well, discuss? Well, that, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'd love to be more saying, oh, no, we've found that it's, it's perfectly accurate. Okay, but, um, but it's perfectly safe. But we can't, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. As I said, yeah. for me, it's it's about what they spray it with. Yep. Um, you know, I, I don't again, think that's an advantage. I still like eat fresh, eat local, eat organic as yep. much as you can. Yep. You know, I appreciate it's not always practical, mm. but um, look after yourselves. I mean, Steve, the nice thing is, is that we've proven that we are living longer. The quality of life, though, that's something that's going to be a concern. I've heard by 2035 that 50% of the global population will fall into the overweight category. Oh, I believe that. We're already um, at 30-something percent yeah, in the Western so, world. And, and it's increasing. So, yeah. and, and again, these are the sorts of things like that we're all going to be like that Wally cartoon where we're lying around in our hover beds you know, putting a button and it's yep. digitizing food for us, right? Sounds good to me. Oh my gosh. Sounds good to me. Yeah, Matt's like, sign me up. Yeah. Um, no, it does not Just sound Just send it through what would be 7G by then. Is it 70G, probably. Uh, yeah, but, probably. Um, yeah, anyway. Thanks, Steve O. Interesting. It's, it's food for yep, thought. For, oh, that's it. Yep, food for thought. Absolutely. Not bad for saying that. God. Um, but again, uh, yeah, uh, question everything. Have a look into your, to yourself. If you're convinced that it's good, great. If yep. you're not, then avoid it. It's yeah, so simple. If you can. Yep. So, Steve-o. Yes. Time for some FAQs. Good. Um, uh, so, this was this was from YouTube um, after the magnesium podcast. Mm. Hi. Since you mentioned magnesium uh, bisglycinate, uh, capsules are only 10% magnesium. True. Could I combine it with magnesium uh, uh, L3 and 8? 3 and 8? Yep. Uh, in the evening to get a, a bit of everything? Or is the three gram dose also required for the benefits of glycinate? Great question. Um, firstly, um, yeah, the, mag the magnesium uh, bisglycinate or diglycinate, whichever you want to call it, is about 10% magnesium. The rest is glycine. So now that's not a bad thing. That's not a good thing. It's just a, the way the way the chemical is, is made up. So what, what you need to do is, is to get a dose of magnesium. A good serve is about 100 milligrams. Um, but you can take up to 300 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate at once because it's absorbed very well. But if you're just chasing something to help you sleep, um, then there's no problem in having a little bit of magnesium bisglycinate with magnesium L3 and 8 because all those chemicals will help you sleep. The magnesium naturally relaxing, the l theanate helps you uh, relax, and the glycine helps you relax. So that would be a good time to supplement and top up with any form of magnesium, but particularly those two because they'll help you sleep. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, um, this person went on to say, I began adding uh, trace minerals to my filtered water and started to see a reduction in my headaches. Yeah, so that's cool. Absolutely. Magnesium is a classic one for reducing headaches because magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker. blocker yeah. And when you block calcium, calcium goes into the cell to release uh, calcitonin gene related peptide, which causes the vasodilation in the brain and gives you the headaches. So, any of the, and, and they use calcium channel blockers as a preventative for migraines and cluster headaches. That's mm -hmm. a medical treatment. Magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Great, eh? Yeah, nice one. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks for writing in. And, and second yeah. one. Um, this was after the DIM podcast. Oh, yeah. Um, what if men take DHEA? Should they also take DIM? Uh, they say that it's supposed to balance out estrogen from DHEA um, and even TRT. Testosterone um, replacement therapy. Yeah. Um, if not, what would you recommend? Yeah, I'd be careful taking DIM if, as, a, as a male because a DIM can block androgen receptors. Right. So it doesn't lower your testosterone level, but it blocks the effects of testosterone in the body. Yeah, interesting. So, so you, you take that um, DIM in certain cases like prostatic cancer. You can take it for, sure. for diseases, but sure. I wouldn't take it every day. Steve, what would you be recommending? Oh, I'd, I'd take DHEA. That'd be fine, but I wouldn't yep. take DIM. No. 
And what would you take with the DHEA to help the pathway channels? Because at um, the end of the day, right? Yeah. Zinc? Yeah, you yeah, hear me say z- z- <laughs> I would. Uh, well, that's the, that is my go-to. Yeah. It, Steve, could there be anything? And is there anything I've missed on the zinc that helps uh, there? B6 helps too. Yeah. Um, but but look, the, no, the zinc is great. Zinc also regulates 5-alpha reductase, so it stops it going further to DHT and all this other stuff. So and you need a little bit. So a little bit coming through is fine, but yeah, yeah it stops the, the surge in t- too much. Yeah. Now, also, males lose a lot of zinc too with their activities, which I won't go into detail about. Yep. yep. But if you're married, you don't have that many activities of that anyway, so it's not a problem for me. Um, <laughs> Steve, it's but, supposed to be the other way, but yeah, anyway, yes. Um, but, um, yeah, so so males lose a lot of zinc, so we have a higher requirement of zinc than women. Yep. Women lose iron, they have a higher requirement of iron, so yep. it's just differences. Men and women are different, you know? That's controversial. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you there, Steve. Oh, we're in um, trouble again, are we? Damn. Um, yes. So I think, okay, is there anything else that you'd recommend potentially? I mean, like oh. DIM. I mean, yeah. yeah, we're not a huge fan of DIM. And, nah. and please, have, have a listen to the podcast, Don't Be a Dimwit, because um, it, it's kind of a really cool podcast. I can't yeah. remember what number it is, but um, mm. if you just type that into the to the website there. But I'd say zinc is absolutely, yeah. you know, conditionally essential for men. It really, really is. Um Oh, there's herbs, Tonkarali and Tribulus yep. and all these classic yep. herbs you can they take They can all to. help, yep, 100%. Yeah. Nettles is good for freeing up testosterone. Yep. Um, Shilajit, terrific. Um, Tonkarali, I think I said that. So yep. they're, they're wonderful for, for men in general, and they're very good for you too. Yeah. You know, they're not just good for your libido. They're good for you as a human being. Yeah. So they're really good as well. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, for the questions. If you want to jump on uh, to the website, you can talk to someone on the live chat and say, hey, um, they read out my question, and we'll send you out a little a little goodie bag, or you can email us at info at atpscience.com. And again, just say, hey, they read out my question. Um, hook me up. <laughs> Absolutely. And Steve will hook you up. Yeah, yeah I'll hook you up. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for the questions. And Steve, that's all. See you next week. See you next week. Steve-O. Yes. We've got um, bonus steak knives, I think, maybe. Yeah, is that, what, is that what we're yeah, calling it? Love so, steak. Look, guys, we're, we're doing, we, we've had so many questions on the uh, on the Milk Alternative podcast that um, we're actually going to release uh, a small bonus episode uh, in the next few weeks to answer and address all of your questions. So, um, uh, there's been so many questions and so much to cover. It's actually spawned enough for us to kind of do a bit of a mini, mini podcast. Mm. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. There's some concerns out there. Yes. Uh, is this, and look, it's really, really hard to, to change your, um, you know, your, your, um, your lifestyle mm. based on this. Cause so many of us, inc- and look, I can imagine probably at least half, if not more of these questions probably revolve around the morning coffee. A good <laughs> yeah. friend of mine, Mikey, who actually listens to the podcast was like, Oh no, I'm going to die. Cause oh. I'm having my, my arm and you know, here, here he was thinking that he's doing, he actually was in a, on a, uh, talking with Tony mm. going, Hey, you know, here I am thinking I'm doing the right thing by not having dairy milk. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm getting this in there. And as I said, like, and this is no endorsement. We don't have any commercial relationship with Nutty Bruce, but that's probably the one to use. I don't know how they go in coffees, by the way, but you could use that. But what I'm switching to mm. is, um, and in the process, because I'm not perfect as well too, but to um, percolated coffee with some cream. Nice. So that's, you know, you could go for your long blacks as well too. Maybe that's the way to go. It's like so, a bulletproof coffee. I mean, they had, they had yeah. the high fat in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of a lot of people that we've got, they add the amperage yes. to it, right? Which, you know, I don't like that, but it's minty. But some people absolutely love it and they feel it gives them a really nice zing in the morning, right? Okay. But, uh, and that's the hard thing. If mm. you want to look after your health, sometimes it means changing the way that you do things. But yeah. guys, we've got a podcast coming out. Um, uh, if you've got any questions about it before the podcast goes live, please send them through to info at ADP Science um, or through um, a form on the podcast page on the ADP Science web- website. If you click on the podcast, you can put a little question in there as well too. Absolutely. So if you've got any questions or if you've asked us questions that haven't been answered, we are going to do it. Yeah. If you've got questions before the Milk Alternative podcast comes out and you want to know about almond milk or macadamia nut milk or soy milk or you know, any of those sorts of questions whatsoever, please, you know, write to us and let us know now before we do the podcast, which we're going to be doing hopefully in the next week or so, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys.